Seven seventeen fifty six. Three injections today. Two in my arm, one in my right eyeball. It stings for a minute, but the unit is efficient in spraying for infection. Seven pills, most of which I can't identify. The largest is green and shaped like a bullet. I can't help wondering if it's meant to be inserted somewhere. Once I've swallowed them, my wrist monitor flashes for a moment, then it settles on one two seven. Not bad, but could be better. Via eye share, Marcus boasts that his is up to one three six, a full nine years more than mine. Must hit the gym later. The pod's white light gives me a headache by lunchtime, but my unit is efficient in dosing me with painkillers. I don't check which one. I manage a new personal best on the rowing machine, competing against a virtual team from the late twentieth century. So I celebrate with a sparkling aloe juice as the light fades into evening settings. Wrist still says one two seven. Must try harder tomorrow. Seven eighteen fifty six. Six pills today, four injections. The extra one has been scheduled by my unit, as I have to go outside this afternoon. I have my suit naturally, but the idea of the outside stresses me. My blood pressure has gone up, but the unit says not to worry. It has a pill for that. Even so, my wrist monitor has slumped to one two four by breakfast. And I can practically feel those three years being whittled away by the anxiety. This meeting had better be worth it. I spend twenty minutes making sure the suit is fully sealed before opening the door. There's a hiss as it slides back, and I imagine I can see the particles of dirt drifting through from the outside. It reminds me that I'll need to fumigate once I get back. I set a reminder. It's been almost six months since I was out there. I've seen the security cam images, of course. And the drone broadcasts, the masses of poor clustered around open fires, their faces blackened with dirt and soot. The drones picked up footage of a small boy last week, only five or six, foraging in the waste cans two blocks from here. Shots of him tugging with his teeth at the skin and bones of an old chicken wing, scraping blue mould from a block of cheese before wolfing it down in three ravenous bites. I can't remember the last time I saw mould. None of it prepares me for the reality. There are a few of them, a couple of meters beyond my door. Their bodies hunched under layers of synthetic wool. They stand as soon as they see me. Their hands held out, pleading. One, a scarf wrapped around the lower half of his face, has open sores from his fingertips to his wrists. The news broadcasts claim that medical medical supplies are dropped off on street corners once a week, but I hear rumours that they stopped over a year ago. Certainly, the man with the sores can't be following any of the approved skincare plans. I do my best to step around them, thumbing the suit's defence net to on. A couple of them receive minor shocks as I stride past, so I tell the suit to play some Wagner loud until we're past them. I don't mind the electric crackle, but the screams are too much. I can feel my stress levels rocketing just at the thought of it. At the corner, the crowd clears, and I stop for a breather by a rusted metal drum. It looks like someone's been using it as a fire pit. The edges scorched and blackened. I check my wrist. I thought so. Down to one, two, two in a matter of minutes. If I was still in my pod, I'd be wiping my brow. But the suit just wicks it away, reuses it for the built-in cooling system. Thank God for technology. It's as I step away that it happens. I'm not sure what it means at first, but suddenly there are red lights flashing across my visor. And Ride of the Valkyries is abruptly interrupted by an ear-piercing digital klaxon. I stagger with the sensory overload, and it's then that I spot it. At the back of my leg, my calf, the suit has caught on a jagged spur sticking out from the side of the drum. From ankle to knee, in one great obscene rip, the outer lining is torn, open to the air, to the dirt, the dust, the germs. I'm no longer sealed in. I am outside. The sweat breaks for real now as I sprint back the way I came. Thankfully, all those hours on the treadmill pay off, and I'm able to shoulder my way past the growing mass of bodies in front of my door, jab at the entry button, collapse into the pod. Pulling off the suit, I order an immediate fumigation and more pills, more shots, anything the pod can give me. While I wait, I cough and look at my hand in dread. Seven nineteen fifty-six. I've calmed down a little now. The pod has given me something for that. Said I needed it for my blood pressure. Everything feels kind of fuzzy, 
which is nice. On iShare, Marcus says that something similar happened to him last year on a trip to the exchange. And he's up to 137 now, so it's clearly not done him much harm. As for me, I can't quite see my wrist monitor properly. Everything looks blurred, the focus softened by the meds. I thought it said 107 earlier, but it looks different now. Are there only two digits? One of them might be a six. The pod offers me another two pills, yellow, with smiling faces printed on them. I swallow them gratefully. Everything's going to be just fine. <laughs>